As inhabitants of this world, we've had our fair share of natural beauties and man-made wonders. But our planet isn't without its fair share of mysteries either, especially when it comes to our oceans, on which we always seem to be making new bizarre discoveries. Keep on watching to see how these mysterious places in our oceans gave goosebumps to even the brightest scientists out there. You've heard of the Bermuda Triangle. Well, have you ever heard of the Michigan Triangle? Probably not. Consisting of the shoreline of Illinois, Michigan, Indiana, and Wisconsin states, the Michigan Triangle has been linked to numerous strange disappearances, ranging from entire airplanes and crew members from numerous ships. In fact, some of the sailors who often sail there have claimed that time seemed to stop, slow down, or accelerate up. Its reputation began in 1937, when Captain George Donner disappeared. Captain George Donner had given his crew instructions to wake home when the ship approached a port, while making their usual coal delivery. Even though Donner's cabin door was closed from the inside, when his crew arrived at his freighter cabin three hours later to inform him, Donner had vanished. The story gets even more interesting when Northwest Airlines Flight 2501, who was on a journey from Seattle to New York City in 1950, suddenly vanished as it passed over the Michigan Triangle. The 58-passenger aircraft appeared to disappear into thin air. And despite the Michigan Shipwreck Research Associates' exhaustive search efforts, neither the aircraft nor any of its occupants were ever located. Around Miyake Island, about 60 miles south of Tokyo, is a section of the Pacific Ocean known as the Devil Sea, commonly referred to as the Pacific Bermuda Triangle. Due to old myths about dragons that supposedly dwelt off the coast of Japan, the region is also known as the Dragon's Triangle. Charles Berlitz, an author who wrote a book on the mystery in the 1980s, decided to record the paranormal occurrences that took place. In his book, he notes that the region was formally designated a danger zone after Japan lost five military vessels with a total of more than 700 sailors between the years. What's even more scary was that this was between the years of peace in 1952 and 1954, making it impossible for any foreign countries to have made an attack. Berlitz's claims were eventually investigated, and it was discovered that the military vessels were actually fishing vessels, and that some had disappeared outside the Devil's Sea, making it invalid. Investigators also noted that during the time the ships vanished, hundreds of fishing vessels were lost annually in and around Japan, owing to weather and piracy rather than paranormal activity or fabled sea dragons. However, the Devil's Sea's reputation as a mysterious and dangerous island continues to persist among its locals. The perfect definition of steampunk and revolution is the uninhabited island called Hashima Island, or also known as Battleship Island. Hashima Island, also known as Gunkanjima, was a significant coal mine that was found in 1887 before Mitsubishi purchased it in 1890. After that, the island came to represent Japan's rapidly expanding industrialization. Its glory days are still remembered by books, movies, and word of mouth. But there's a dark side not many know. For the Japanese, this may have been a sign of progress, but for the Chinese and Korean prisoners of war, it's a prison. The Japanese military forced the prisoners to construct the buildings from 1930 until just after World War II. Some of these forced laborers never returned home due to the harsh conditions they endured. The island was given the names Jail Island or even Hell Island by the people who worked here, which is why it's known for its ghostly sightings. Despite the island having no electricity, fishermen who sail close by the island claim to have observed weird flickering lights in the structures. Cold areas have been felt and strange noises have been heard. Some claim to have been touched by phantom hands, while others claim to have felt like they were being watched. Ever heard of a sea without a shoreline? Is that even possible? Well, the Sargasso Sea is here to prove that it is. Located in the section of the North Atlantic Ocean, it's encircled by strong ocean currents. Not only that, but the sea is overrun with the dense brown invasive seaweed genus known as Sargassum. Have we mentioned that the North Atlantic Ocean is known for its unpredictable and turbulent current? 
Well, what's mysterious about this location is that despite being surrounded by the icy seas of the Atlantic Ocean, the sea remains uncannily warm and quiet. A lot of people have noted that it must be because of the accumulation of seaweed and how this isolated a certain part of the ocean. The area's uncanny quiet and the fact that several crewless ships have been discovered wandering through its calm waters add to its mystery. A notorious tale here is the French commerce ship Rosalie, who traveled across the Sargasso Sea in 1840 and was later found with its sails up but no crew aboard. According to 19th century mythology, in order to explain the strange disappearances, it was rumored that the Sargasso Sea's carnivorous seaweed was able to consume sailors entirely, leaving only the ship. If you're an American, then you've probably learned in your history class the captivating mystery of the lost colony of Roanoke Island. The mystery of this island remains to be one of America's oldest unsolved mysteries. Its origins can be traced to August 1587, when a group of about 115 English settlers arrived on Roanoke Island, which is now off the coast of what is now North Carolina. Later that year, it was decided that John White, governor of the new colony, would sail back to England in order to gather a fresh load of supplies. But just as he arrived, a major naval war broke out between England and Spain, and Queen Elizabeth I had called on every available ship to confront the mighty Spanish Armada. In August 1590, White finally returned to Roanoke, where he had left his wife and his infant daughter and the other settlers three long years before. Imagine to his surprise that no one was there to greet him. He found no trace of the colony or its inhabitants, and few clues to what might have happened, apart from a single word, Croatoan, carved into a wooden post. Grab your blankets, make sure to turn off your lights because this tale will seriously leave you shivering. Isola della Gaiola or Gaiola Island is a small island just off the Gulf of Naples. It's vibrant and full of rocky coastlines that are kissed by emerald waters that are so transparent it's said to reveal ancient remains that are submerged beneath the surface. There's even a private cottage available for you to take in the breathtaking view. Wait, why doesn't it look that bad? You might think of that first, but the island is so scary that all the locals have deserted it because of the fear of falling victim to the island's curse. So, where did it all go wrong for Isola de la Gaiola? Bad luck first started to befall in the 1800s, when a hermit who had lived on the island, Il Mago or the wizard, simply vanished without trace. It got even more terrifying when in 1911, Captain Gaspare Albenga crashed into rocks and drowned when he considered buying the island. The story continues when Luigi de Negri suffered a financial collapse after he constructed the sizable villa that's still there today. When the villa was bought, the owner, Hans Braun, was murdered in the 1920s. He was wrapped in a rug and shortly later his widow died after drowning in the sea. Another owner committed suicide in a psychiatric facility, while the following owner suffered a heart attack. Curse or not, this island definitely has some dark history no one could ignore. There's only two words that can describe this island and that is misty and magical. Full of locals, sailors and adventurers, Sable Island is populated by an abundance of wild horses, grey seals and a whole lot of birds. Not only is it a weird yet lovely place, the island runs a 45 km long crooked shoreline with shifting sands and swirling tides that have baffled many sailors and explorers. It's famous for its sand dunes, which give the island its original French name, Ile de Sable, or Island of Sand. Oh, and did we mention that about 350 shipwrecks and at least three plane crashes earned her the reputation of being the graveyard of the Atlantic? Now, we're not saying it's the island's fault, but it's definitely the weather that surrounds the island, as it's thick fog and cloudy weather, along with treacherous currents from the Gulf Stream, Labrador Current, and Belle Isle Current, lured many to their demise. Even though Antarctica is renowned for its immaculate white snow cover, one area sticks out for being blood crimson in color. This unusual occurrence, sometimes known as the Blood Falls, has become one of the mysteries of the century, and was first identified by experts as a frozen waterfall in 1911. A lot of scientists had examined and come up with theories in order to explain why the water bleeds red. 
For example, they noted that maybe the presence of algae was the cause of this, or that there was an unknown dark crimson stain hidden in a section of the cliff. But to no avail, they couldn't support this. Currently, the accepted hypothesis is that water comes from the glacier. What's even more mystifying than the remarkable color is that the location is one of the coldest places on the planet. And yet, weirdly enough, there's a whole ecosystem that lives underneath the ice that no scientists have explored. Who knows what other untold wonders live beneath the ice? The mysterious Moai, stone monolites that have long kept watch over the island's landscape can only be found on Rapa Nui, also known as Easter Island. Their existence is a wonder of human ingenuity, and their significance is somewhat strange. The Rapa Nui civilization, which lived on this remote island in the Pacific Ocean, built around 1,000 enormous stone statues some 900 years ago. When European explorers arrived on the island for the first time in 1722, they were enthralled by these enormous statues, which are on average 13 feet tall and weigh 14 tons each. There's no definitive explanation for why the ancient Polynesians sculpted and erected the statues throughout the island, although one recent theory hypothesizes that they were placed as markers of freshwater sources. You probably think we've watched a lot of movies when we say that there's a secret underwater location that was seen as a portal to the afterlife. Known as the Ring of Cenotes, this mysterious cave has thousands of sinkholes underneath it, and is proven to be created by the Chicxulub Impactor, the meteor that was responsible for triggering the mass extinction of dinosaurs. The cenote has a magical mix between freshwater and saltwater that floods the caves and seeps in through openings to the ocean. The cenotes found on the Mexican peninsula have long been shrouded in mystery. Cenotes for the ancient Mayans is known to have a symbolic significance, as they were one of three entrances to the Mayan underworld. For this one in particular, the Maya people believe that it's a sacred portal that leads to the afterlife. The legend says that if you swim to the deepest part of the cenote and reach the bottom, you'll be able to travel to the afterlife. Now, you might think it looks easy with the technology we have now, but many remain unexplored, as divers have only swum up to 60 miles. There is one very deep place on Earth, and it's called the Mariana Trench. You've probably heard something about it before, haven't you? As we all learned in school, Everest is the highest mountain and the Mariana is the deepest and that's probably all you ever learned. That's why the Mariana Trench continues to be a mystery for everyone. Who dwells on it? How deep does it go? What does the bottom look like? Will we ever reach the bottom? About five times larger than the Grand Canyon, the Mariana Trench has two deepest points, the Challenger Deep and the Serena Deep. Which of the places we talked about did you find most interesting?